Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess and today I had an idea to create a chart that is about business value and feasibility. And this chart came up at like a power platform training that I went to and they were graphing the business value and feasibility of a power app and which ones to do. This video is for management or power platform admin or if you're a CIO or you're a portfolio manager so you have multiple projects. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm here in Google. What I'm thinking is business value versus feasibility. So if you search this on Google, some things come up. Let's take a look at some of the images. And the one that really popped into my mind, it was this one right here. And you notice it even says Power Platform Talks. So we'll give credit to whoever created this. Let's see. This is a WordPress article by a Global Black Belt Senior Technology Specialist, Karsten Groth, looks like his name. But if you look at this image here, this is what I want to create in Power Apps. I want to create this business value versus feasibility. Now I'm not probably not going to do the triangle. That's going to add a complexity, but I'm going to make this simple. And pretty much we're just going to have a square or nine squares with the business value and the feasibility. All right. So in Power Apps, I've started this off and I have a grid here, a grid and I had to think about the exact math on this. All right, so in order to draw this square, which is literally just a few rectangles, like all I did was just insert a rectangle and then make it the size of my line that I wanted to create. The, so that's all I did was just use rectangles. And these are my values because I want to be able to do math. So I started at a Y value of 50, then added 200, then added 200. I started at an X value of 700, then added 200, and then added 200. The width of the line and the height of the vertical line are both 600, because that is divisible by three evenly. So that's how I created this uh, tic-tac-toe board, whatever you want to call it. We're going to say across the bottom, this is the business value. This is the business value. We want it to actually be kind of centered in the center. We'll give it some fancy text to make it look neat. Um, maybe not that one. Let's go dancing script and maybe we'll go to 50. No, 40. Okay, so we have the business value here and then the X value. And actually, I really can't make the text vertical unless I do HTML, which I could there, but this is going to be the feasibility. And so now we need some points. So I'm going to grab a circle, a circle. And I, my assumption is what I really want to do is I want to change the color of it based on where it is. So based on if it's in this quadrant, the point, the circle will change colors. If it's in this circle, it'll also change colors you know, if it's good or bad. My idea is I'm gonna start off simple at first, right? Always follow that thought, that process, keep it simple. It, that's what we wanna follow is the keep it simple process. So I'm gonna insert two different text inputs. And actually, we will label these as, you know, how easy is this to implement? How much value Will you see for the app, we'll just call it an app or the product, I don't know, product. Because maybe this is not just for power apps. Maybe this is for all kinds of projects. Do we wanna limit ourselves just to power apps? Maybe you do. Maybe you do wanna just limit yourself to power apps. Now the next thing is, is I put in text inputs. Maybe I don't want text inputs. I feel like people like sliders. Let's put in a slider. Now the slider, the min value, I'm just going to go 0 to 10 instead of 0 to 100. I'm going to go 0 to 10 because that's going to make it easier on me. 0 to 10, the default will be um, not 5. That 5 doesn't sound right. Well, let's make the default 0. The default is 0. Okay, so now we have two sliders. It's 1 to 10. Maybe we want a number to show up as we slide so we could insert... A text label here 
and the text value is equal to slider one dot value. So as we slide, let's see if 10 fits in there. 10 doesn't fit in there. Let's make this a little bit bigger. As we slide, we have our numbers show up. That looks neat. Just gonna copy paste that. And this is gonna go to this slider, which is slider one underscore one, because I copy pasted it. Now, when you develop this and you want a production app, rename everything. But because this is a YouTube video and no one wants to see me rename everything, I'm just gonna kind of skip over that part. I, I'm a bad developer. Don't follow everything I do. Listen to everything I say. All right, so we have two sliders. These are how easy it is to implement, which is the feasibility. And then we have how much value will you see out of the product? That's the business value. So now, this is where it gets really complex for me. I'm actually gonna have probably about 15 of these because I don't think I could just create them. But I'm gonna have 15 of these. I'm just gonna say there's three for now. We have three for now. And I am gonna rename these because it's gonna make it much simpler, simpler on me. I'm gonna call this one circle one. Okay, so on my left side, on my tree view, I have circle one, circle two, and circle three. So now I wanna push these out to the values based on my grid here. Now this is where math is gonna be very important. I wanna make this simple for myself. Instead of calculating you know, based off this X value over here and this Y value over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay a container. So I'm gonna insert a container, not a vertical container, not a horizontal container, just a regular container. I'm gonna overlay it directly over top of my grid. And I removed one of my circles. Let me see if I can get circle one back. So I want circle one to be inside my container. Same with circle two, inside my container, and circle three. So now watch this, watch this. Let's say I take circle one and I move it to the top left. You can see the X value is zero, zero. If I move it all the way down, it's uh, almost 600. It doesn't reach that all the way. We could probably make this circle a little smaller. Maybe we'll make it 15. Go 25. I feel like that was a little too small. So each of my circles are now 25 in the width and height. Now, as I collect information, I want to make sure the circle is that. So just to show, I'm going to say that the X value is equal to slider one dot value times 60. So now as I slide, we can see the circle move. So now the Y value is equal to slider, and maybe I should rename these instead of slider one underscore one, um, is equal to the value times 60. So now we can see that my circle is gonna move along my grid as I move it. Now moves along, oh, it moved outside here. So that's a problem. It moves outside when it's maxed out. So in order to keep this simple, I'm gonna to go to circle one. Instead of 60, I'm gonna say 58. And for the X value, I'm gonna say 58. It's gonna go 50, maybe we'll go a little bit less than 58. 57.5. And for the X value, 57.5. So that keeps us all, all the way in our scale. A zero, zero still puts us in that top left corner. You see that there? So a zero, zero still puts us in that top left corner. As we move along, we can see where we are in the values. Okay, so now I want to do this for multiple points. I need a way to submit my answer and I need a collection in a gallery. 
So I'm going to insert a button. Now you can make this button as pretty as you want it to be or however you want or wherever you want. We're going to say submit. In the on select of this button, it's going to collect. What is it going to collect? It's going to collect my collection um, points, uh, dots, collection circles, collection circles. And it's going to collect the feasibility, which is slider one dot value, and the business value slider one underscore one dot value. All right, so a simple collection. Now let's do a gallery, a vertical gallery. We're gonna put it right down here. I want it to be a lot thinner. I think that's too big. The data source is gonna be my collection. Uh, let's go ahead and collect one. We'll say it's a five and an eight submit. So we see five, eight. And this item dot business value. And we probably need some more spaces in there. We have it in there. Let's go ahead and collect another one. Three, two, submit. And we'll do nine, two. All right, so now let's clear out this bottom mark. Okay, we have a very simple collection of three items. We don't have any like ID. I think we need an ID. Let me click create a clear button now. And I'm creating this as I'm making this video. Um, I haven't done this before. So you'll have to bear with me as we create this. I'm creating this pretty much live, but I'm going to do some editing. So clear our collection circles. So we have our clear button that, that clears. So if we press play, you actually don't see anything there. We also want an ID. So I'm gonna create a variable and then I'm gonna increment that variable. So on, you could do this on the start of your app, on start of the app, or you could do it on the on visible of your screen. I'll just do it on the on visible of my screen. I'm gonna say update context variable ID is zero. So I have a variable now. It starts off as zero. When I submit, I have an ID and it is equal to variable ID plus one. But every time I click the button, I'm gonna update context variable ID to variable ID plus one. I need a semicolon. So every time I click the button, I'm going to increment the ID. But when I clear, I'm also going to set the variable ID to zero. So now let's check this out. I will need to add ID to my gallery. So let's come back to my text here. Let's move this over is this item dot ID. So now as we submit, we have a one, two, three. All right, so now I'm gonna use that ID for my circles. On circle one, instead of doing slider one value dot value times 575, what I wanna do is I wanna look up the first value in my collection. So look up. Now you could do first, right? You could do first, but how am I gonna get the second and the third? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say look up. What am I gonna look up? My collection. And that is when ID is equal to one, then the feasibility. All right, so that's the 
value of x, the value of y, look up, but now I want the business value. So let's see, feasibility is 9. Oh, we forgot to multiply. Times 57.5, the x value times 57.5. All right, so now the feasibility is 9, which is way over here. It looks like we have this backwards. So actually, the x value is the business value. See that? That's the business value. The x value is the business value, and the y value is the feasibility. So now that looks much more correct. The feasibility is 9 all the way down. The business value is a 2. So now for my other circles, I'm just going to copy paste and do the next one. So circle 2. So let's see, circle 2, the feasibility is actually, the business value is here. But this time the ID is 2. All right, so now the Y, I'll just do the other one. So this one, the X is 3. The Y is feasibility. And the Y, the X value should be 3. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of all my X, Y coordinates and everything. We're going to get rid of all that, all these labels in here. I'm just going to start deleting them. All right, so now let's take a look at this. ID1 has a feasibility of 9, a value of 2. Feasibility of 9, a value of 4. Feasibility of 3, and a business value of 4. Let's add one more. Let's go for an 8 and an 8. But we don't have a circle for that one yet. Let's add a circle. This is circle 4. And the x value is id4, and the y value is id4. All right, so that's our 8, 8. So our 8, 8 is in this value here. Okay, so we have four points. Now I want to color code them based on where they are in the quadrant. All right, so this video has gotten particularly long. I didn't realize this app would take this long. So I'm going to cut the video here. Next week, we'll go on to components and we'll finish out the video. We'll finish out the color coding and we'll be able to line up our dots and we'll create components for our circles. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess and I'll see you with the rest of the video next week, Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.